So hey guys, I hope everyone's doing really well. I know it's been so so long since I put out a video and I'm truly sorry about that because I really missed doing this and hopefully from now on I'll be able to put out videos a little more frequently because I really really uh, missed uh, sort of coming to YouTube and putting out my content and but thank you because through this time even when I've been so irregular I've gotten such heartwarming messages on uh, my email and my comments so thank you so much for uh, those encouraging messages that my videos are actually helping you guys so I really feel more motivated to make more videos because of that but anyways I'm currently in Liverpool and I am a clinical observer in the department of nephrology and I think all of you know that I'm more affiliated like more uh, sort of uh, into cardiology because I've, I'm always putting out ECG content and just general cardiology topics but I think nephrology is pretty cool uh, after being here for about two weeks now and I thought we'll just discuss some basic topics and for that I thought it's uh, very important to know just the basic anatomy and physiology before we dive into the topics and um, yeah this is like a basic level anatomy but honestly anatomy is so versatile you could never just go wrong in revising the anatomy. So I thought I'd do like a basic anatomy of the kidney video today. So let's start with the external anatomy of the kidney. So we all know that there are two kidneys in the body and uh, it's a pair of kidneys that lie on either side of the spine. So there's one here and there's one here. And this is actually in the retroperitoneal space, which is so it's between the parietal peritoneum and the posterior abdominal wall and it's well surrounded by muscle fat and ribs as we can see here. So you can see some of the fat, you can see this is the peritoneal cavity without the organs obviously which they've portrayed and here are our kidneys behind the peritoneal cavity which is called the retroperitoneal space. So you can see that left kidney is basically located between T12 and L3 vertebra, but right will be slightly lower. This picture is not such a good picture because yeah, it's, it's showing it way up. But anyways, you can see that the right-sided kidney is a bit lower because there's a liver on top, so that pushes the right kidney down. And again, this is a poor picture because normally the kidney is sort of overlapped by only the 11th and 12th ribs. And yeah, so the upper portion will be covered by the 11th and the 12th ribs and there'll be a suprarenal gland as well. Okay, let's go on to the dimensions and weight. So each kidney is can be anything in between 115 to 175 grams. In females, it's a bit lighter than the males and they're about 11 to 14 centimeters in length, 6 centimeters wide and 4 centimeters thick. And like I told you, they are well cushioned by a capsule and we'll be going into the layers as well. So these are just to protect them, shape them, and just hold them to their position in the retroperitoneal cavity. And so from the deep to the superficial, first there's a renal capsule, which is like a fibrous, it's a very thick, it's a very strong fibrous capsule. Then of course we have the perirenal fat layer, which you can see here very clearly. So there's like a perirenal um, fat layer, which you can sort of see here. This is the perirenal fat. And then there's the renal fascia as well. It's called the girota's fascia or the perirenal fascia. You can see it here. So you have the girota's fascia, the perirenal fascia. And then you have a pararenal fat, which is mostly there in the postural lateral aspect of the kidney. I'm not sure we can see it here, um, but you can see that it's so, so well surrounded by just generally well cushioned and you know kept in space. So you can see here that the fascia, the, all the fascias that we've mentioned and generally the overlying peritoneum, it is the one that anchors the kidney to the posterior abdominal wall. And again, like I said, it's in the retroperitoneal uh, position. So coming to just the general appearance and what you need to know about the anatomy, main thing here is the hilum of the kidney, which is present medially. It will be facing the medial aspect of the body. So obviously we all know that the kidney looks like a kidney bean and the renal hilum is in the is the entry and exit site for structure. So mainly you can't see the nerves here, but you can see the renal vein, the renal artery. 
So this is the renal vein, uh, this is the renal artery and obviously the ureter and the lymphatics, all of it uh, basically is in this particular area. This is called the hilum of uh, the kidney. So coming to the main function, so this video is a basic anatomy video, so I haven't written much, but more like the most important ones are filtration and excretion and water and electrolyte balance. And so let's come to the internal anatomy a little. So you can see here that there's an outer region called the renal cortex, which we can see here, and an inner region called the medulla, right? So the medulla, like the name suggests, it just means middle. So all of your uh, pyramids and columns are present in the medulla. And in the medulla, like I said, there are about five to eight renal pyramids. So these are the pyramids that we're talking about. You can see them here. This, this particular structure here is the pyramid, right? And these pyramids are divided, like in between the pyramids, there's a space called the column. So this part of it, just in between here, this is the column, like it says here, the renal column. And here, the tip of the pyramid, the medially, this part is called the papilla. And we'll be coming across this term when we talk about papillary necrosis secondary to overuse of analgesics, which is a very common MRCP and just generally entrance question on a PG level. So this is this is where the papilla can get necrosed because of analgesic overuse, you know, and talk non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. But yeah, so each renal papilla, it further drains into the minor calyx, like above this level, this is the minor calyx. So this part is the papilla, this is the minor calyx, this part is the major calyx, and that several of these minor calyces, like all of these minor calyces, they'll combine to form a major calyx, and from here, ultimately, the urine will drain into the ureter, down to the urinary bladder, and out. So I hope that made sense. So this is the basic anatomy of it. And obviously the arteries and the veins. So a whopping 25% of the cardiac output basically goes out to both the kidneys. So we're talking a lot of blood here. So an average human body might have anywhere between 4.5 to 5.5 liters of blood. So we're talking 25% of that. So it is pretty rich in blood supply and it requires a lot of blood. So here's a little bit write up of what we just spoke about. So we spoke about the renal cortex, we spoke about the medulla, we spoke about the pyramids, we spoke about, you know, the renal papilla, the calluses, the major and minor calyx, and how uh, it all goes into this part, which is the renal pelvis, and then directly into the ureter. So this is the sort of brief anatomy about what really goes on. And coming to the most confusing part, at least it was confusing for me, and it always is, is the venous and the arterial supply. So this is a traumatizing old um, flowchart that I remember from medical school, but hey, we don't have to go through this just as yet. You can take a screenshot a little later. So let me just sort of make it easier for you here. So here you can see the basic arterial supply. Uh, so, uh, renal artery is a direct branch from the aorta. It further goes and forms a segmental artery, which goes and forms an interlobar artery. So interlobar will come somewhere here, then it comes becomes an arcuate artery, and which forms an interlobular artery. So here, this particular red structure is also interlobular artery, by the way. And an afferent arteriole, which goes into the glomerulus, is a branch of the interlobular artery. And this further goes into the glomerulus, as you can see. This is the glomerulus. From the glomerulus, there will be an efferent arteriole, and which goes into the peritubular capillaries. These capillaries are the ones which are surrounding, you know, the the loop of Henle, the proximal convoluted tubule, the distal convoluted tubule, and all of those things. And from here, it goes into the interlobular vein, as you can see here, this is the interlobular vein, and then into the arcuate art vein, interlobar vein, the renal vein, and into the 
IVC. Okay, so this can be a lot, but trust me, you'll get used to this. And it's just important to know how it really functions. It's a very beautiful system. So this is a one, this is a unit, a functional unit of the kidney, just like a neuron is of the brain. This nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. So the renal artery, it forms, you know, this part somewhere here. It might be forming segmental artery, which forms interlobar arteries and then arcuate arteries and then interlobular artery. Afferent uh, uh, arteriole is a branch of this interlobular artery here. And then that goes into the glomerulus. It's here. So the glomerulus, uh, it basically filters all the blood coming through it and it stores it in the Bowman's capsule. This is the this here is the Bowman's capsule. And from there it goes into the efferent arteriole and into the peritubular capillaries. So there is two sets of major sort of um, capillaries that are there in the nephron. One is obviously here in the glomerulus. Another one is this peritubular tuft. And I'd say, to be honest, majority of the filtration and collection and reabsorption happens in the second uh, set. We'll learn about this a bit later as well. So this is present around the loop of Henle, the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule. And now if maybe you look back on this, it might make a little more sense. But yeah, it does take a while. So maybe make uh, take a, sh a screenshot of this and you know look at it again and again to have a better memory of it. But it's not crucial. But it's just important to know that it's a very nice sort of system that is there in uh, within the renal system to sort of keep it all going. So obviously this is only the this determines all the proper functioning of these arteries and veins determine the glomerular filtration rate, which we'll be talking about more in our future videos. So like I told you, arterial supply is by the renal artery and venous is by the renal vein. So venous drainage, as you can see here, it's drained by the renal veins. There are two. You can clearly see that the left one is a bit longer than the right one, obviously because IVC is present more towards the right side of the body. So this left renal vein, it travels anteriorly to the abdominal iota. And um, you can see our superior mesentric will be somewhere at this level. So this superior mesentric artery, it actually goes below the level uh, of the superior mesentric artery. And so this, uh, we can talk about something called a horseshoe kidney that happens. So in those cases, it will be connected. These two kidneys, or one of the poles of the kidney, especially the lower pole mostly will be connected. And that could cause problems in the origin of the superior mesentric artery. But that's, again, it's rare, but you could come across it in OPD setup and things like that. So lastly, let's come to the lymphatics. So lateral para, uh, so it's basically drains into the para aortic lymph nodes. That's all we need to know. And it's basically present in the origin. It's uh, present around this particular region and the origin of the, it might be somewhere here. So yep, so that's the basic anatomy of uh, the kidney. I hope that was clear. So just to give a brief summary of whatever we discussed, we discussed that there are two main regions, the cortex and the medulla, and the kidneys receive about 25% of the cardiac output. They are well protected, they are in the retroperitoneal space, they have a you know renal fat pad covering, and then they have overlying ribs and muscles, and they have this really important part called the renal hilum where there is ureters, blood vessels, lymph vessels, nerves, they enter and leave at this hilum. And we learned that the renal arteries, they arise from the aorta and the renal veins, they directly drain into the inferior vena cava. And yeah, I forgot to mention, kidney is actually derived, uh, all these actions that we spoke about, all the filtration and the, you know, all of that stuff, it's done by nephrons. We already spoke about the nephron, which is the function unit. There are about 1.3 million nephrons per kidney. So these are the functional units. And we spoke about two main capillary beds. One of them is the glomerulus and this filters the blood and the filtrate, which is captured by the Bowman's capsule. And also, we spoke about another system that's formed when blood flows through the second capillary bed, which surrounds the proximal convoluted and distal convoluted tubules and the loop of Henle. And I also spoke about how majority of the water and solutes are basically recovered in this second capillary bed. And this filtrate is processed and then finally gathered by the collecting ducts. And like we spoke, they go into the minor calluses, 
you know, we spoke about it here. We spoke how it goes to the minor callus and into the major callus. And then it goes into the renal pelvis and then finally the ureters. So, yep, I hope this was useful and I hope to see you guys in my next video. And I really, really, I'm going to try my best to put out more videos out there because I really love doing this. And thank you again for all the support and love you guys keep showing me through your messages and comments. And I hope you have a brilliant day. If you liked the video and found it useful, please share it with somebody else who might also gain from it. And follow me this uh, down below so that you can follow my journey through this department and many more to come while I rotate through different specialties, hopefully. Anyways, uh, please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video.